Let's go over how to solder your new GBA CPU and memory kit into the new replacement funny playing motherboards that we sell. The first thing to do is make sure that we have all the basic essentials to begin soldering. First off, we have a soldering iron. Obviously this melts your solder and will be your primary tool during this whole process. Then we have flux. Flux is a chemical that protects your solder from oxidation while you're soldering. Flux also prevents bridging in between pins. Bridging is when two pins accidentally get solder connecting them when they aren't meant to be connected. All this goes to show that flux is a super important part of the soldering process. Our next recommendation is soldering wick. This is a copper braid that when heated up will wick away all the solder from your board. Simply heat up the wick and it will automatically begin to pick up a lot of your solder. Flux will help it function even better if it doesn't. Finally, we have alcohol. This is used to clean up the flux residue at the very end. And this is important because we'll be using a lot of flux for this project. Now that we've established the basic tools required for the project, let's discuss how exactly it's done. First, we position our CPU onto the motherboard. We want to make sure that all the pins line up with the pads on the motherboard. If any pins are bent, then you may need to use tweezers to gently bend them back to their original positions. Once you have your chip lined up, then you have a few options. You could potentially tape it down to prevent it from moving, or you could use a tacky flux that will help hold the chip in place. In my case, I'm using ChipQuick SMD291. It's a tacky, no clean flux. This is what I ended up doing for my project, as I didn't want to have to worry about removing the tape or anything from the chip as I'm working. Once I apply flux to the chip, I'm ready to begin soldering. For soldering, we recommend cleaning the tip every time before you touch the motherboard. This will help prevent accidental bridging and even help you pull solder away from already bridged pins. Our next tip is to only put a drop of solder on the tip of the soldering iron when you're applying new solder to the legs. This will help reduce the amount of bridging. As you're working, if you feel like you're getting too many bridges or anything like that, then you should simply apply more flux. Flux can't hurt as long as you clean it up at the very end. You will most likely need to go pin by pin the entire way down the CPU and RAM to ensure that they all get soldered. If you have experience with drag soldering, then you can do that as well and remove any bridges after the fact, but for most people, going pin to pin is the safest way. Be sure not to touch any of the surrounding components with your iron, as you risk the possibility of damaging them or even accidentally removing them from the board altogether. When you're done with your CPU, then you'll need to solder the RAM to the board as well. Repeat the exact same steps that you did for the CPU. Keep in mind that these are already soldered chips that I'm simply reflowing for the sake of the video. Actually soldering these chips on video is very difficult. On some of the boards, we notice that there's four pins near the cartridge slot that aren't soldered. We recommend simply flowing them with extra solder to make sure that there's a good connection. When you get done soldering your CPU and RAM, then you can begin to test your console. We recommend testing both GBA and GBC games to ensure that the cartridge slot on the console works. From here, as long as you've tested your console completely, you can solder your speaker on and reassemble your console. If you want to see more content like this, please be sure to subscribe and join our Discord down below.